Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and I've had this replay kicking around on my hard drive for quite some time. In fact, you'll be able to tell exactly how long I've had this replay kicking around on my hard drive by one of the achievements that, um, you know, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce his name. Kraux? Krauxer? We're going to call him Kraux. Here in the USS Salem, achieves during the course of this battle. Let's see if you can actually spot the relevant achievement that dates this particular battle. Anyway, Kraux in the USS Salem. This was the first premium tier 10 ship to be introduced to World of Warships. Although you couldn't just go out and buy it, you had to earn it. The ship was only purchasable through coal, which is an in-game resource that you earn by completing various different missions, or by selecting resource containers from your daily uh, experience crates. Of course, over the Christmas and New Year period, there were also the snowflakes, which you could knock off your ships by winning a battle in them, and at the lower tiers also rewarded coal. So this was never a ship that you could simply flash your credit card at the game and buy and instantly be playing in tier 10 battles. It was always something that you had to earn. Now, there has been a ship like the Salem in the game since the very beginning, because the Salem is a Des Moines-class heavy cruiser, and it's very, very similar to the existing USS Des Moines although there are certain differences. The USS Salem historically was never completed with the catapult launchers fitted. So here in game, the Salem, unlike the Des Moines, cannot choose to launch a spotter or catapult fighter. Now that's not the only difference. The other differences are slightly more significant, and they're to do with the surveillance radar and damage repair party consumables. The Salem has a significantly improved damage repair party, which as well as being able to repair up to 48% of normal damage, can also repair up to 33% of citadel damage. The trade-off is that the surveillance radar consumable available on the Salem is, well, not very good. It's basically, to all intents and purposes, the same as the tier 7 radar that you get on the Atlanta, it only has an 8.5km range. In fact, Krauxer here isn't even using it. He's instead elected to go with the hydroacoustic surge consumable instead. In most other respects, the Salem is functionally identical to the USS Des Moines. It's got the same nine 203mm guns in three turrets, two at the front, one at the back, with the same five second base reload, which is capable of doing fearsome damage with armor piercing shells to enemy cruisers that are foolish enough to show you their broadside at just about any range and enemy battleships that are equally foolish at close ranges. Now at the moment, he's attempting to score hits with his armor piercing on the enemy Hindenburg over there, and he can't actually see the Hindenburg, there's an island in the way, so he's having to estimate the level of the Hindenburg's waterline. And in fact, that was a pretty good guess, he's managed to score a citadel on the Hindenburg. Now he's attempting to do the same on the enemy Seattle. And it's probably going to be easier on the Seattle because he can at least see his superstructure, so he's able to more accurately predict where the Seattle's waterline is, and is in fact rewarded with even more citadels. Looking for shots at the North Carolina, hell why not, he's broadsiding two. More citadels on the Seattle, but the Seattle is about to bite back, and he's not alone. And that was a fairly significant chunk of health. He does have shots in the air, attempting to finish that Seattle off. He's not having a particularly good game so far, and this might in fact be a kill. Oh, no. The Seattle gets away with it. He's managed to get the island between himself and the Seattle, which is protecting him from any return fire from the Seattle, but of course that's also now protecting the Seattle from any return fire from him. Shots out at the enemy Hindenburg that he citadeled earlier, who is on pretty low health, and oh, that Amari just got absolutely crippled by a torpedo drop. And the team have just lost to Cleveland to a Des Moines on the enemy team. But there appear to be a lot of ships on the enemy team that are on very, very low health. The Seattle, the Hindenburg, but nobody appears to really be able to finish them off. The tactical situation isn't looking too bad. Okay, the one ship down. The enemy team have one cap under their control, but the other two caps are at least contested by the team. Or at least they were, until the friendly Akazuki got sunk by the enemy Hindenburg, which meant that Capture Point Bravo in the middle of the map is now also being flipped by the enemy team. So they're now two ships down. The enemy team are almost, two, well, they're more than 200 points ahead. And they're threatening to take map control with possession of two of the three available caps. Meanwhile, Kraux, 
out of line of sight behind this island and using the... Well, you could argue that they're superior ballistics of US Navy 203mm armour piercing shells, but, well, it depends on the situation. Under situations like this, the higher ballistic arc of American cruiser and destroyer ammunition means that you're entirely capable of lobbing shells over islands like this. Something that, for example, a German or Russian cruiser probably wouldn't be able to do. Certainly wouldn't be able to do if they were any closer to the island. On the other hand, German and Russian cruisers tend to have much higher velocity shells, which means while they can't lob shots over islands the way US cruisers can, they're significantly better at hitting targets that are moving quickly because of the higher shell velocity and the flatter trajectory of the shells. While all of this is going on, of course, the enemy team are now a good 300 points ahead, with Krauss's team showing absolutely no inclination to attempt to push either of the two available uncontested cap circles. Krauxo, of course, trying to do what he can from behind the safety of this island, momentarily popping in and out of vision range of various different enemy ships, keeping up a withering hail of high explosive fire against that enemy Des Moines over there. Krauxo's team are now also down a further tier 9 cruiser, having lost a Seattle of their own. The two low health enemy ships that we've seen so far, the Seattle and the Hindenburg, are still intact and presumably have managed to use their damage repair parties to recover back the significant portion of the health that they've lost. Once again, nobody on Krauss's team, himself included, appear to be capable of finishing off any of these wounded enemy ships, although that Des Moines over there, caught in open water with no islands to hide behind, he's looking like a good candidate. No, he's managed to get smoked up and concealed. There's some actual teamwork going on between the enemy destroyers over there. Denied the kill on the Des Moines, Kraus starts looking around for another target, and then plot twist! Despite the assistance offered by the friendly destroyers, the Des Moines was going too quickly to stay inside the smokescreen, so now's their chance. Come on guys, focus your fire on this guy, take him out, let's at least sink one enemy ship. Are they going to get him? They have in fact got him, that's Kraus's first kill, and it only cost his team a Seattle, a Cleveland, <laughs> and an Akazuki. That's the only good news that we have, however, because as well as controlling the Charlie Cap, the enemy team are now flipping control of both Alpha and Bravo as well. Enemy dive bombers coming in, although they're a little too far away to waste the defensive fire consumable on them, but there are some very, very handy islands up ahead that Krauser can use to shelter behind. And he's moving up to take advantage of them while keeping some armor-piercing fire going against that North Carolina over there, who appears to have overextended just a little bit, and only now is attempting to turn around. Now at the moment, Krauss has only been targeted by one ship. It's probably that North Carolina, because I don't think anything else on the enemy team, certainly nothing else that we can see, appears to have a line of fire to it. And the North Carolina, armed with 16-inch guns, is capable of overmatching the bows of the Salem which only have 27 millimeters of armor. Oh, enemy torpedo spotted, that's probably the Z-46, but any problems that he may have had to deal with from the North Carolina have been taken care of. He's been sunk as he turned around and exposed his broadside to enemy fire. Anti-aircraft guns working over enemy torpedo bombers over there. It's at this point where Krauss might be wishing that he had in fact taken the radar over the hydroacoustic search because there's clearly an enemy destroyer around somewhere. Somebody can see him and he is being targeted. It's not that his hydro hasn't been useful. Well actually his hydro hasn't been useful. He's been running it but he actually spotted those torpedoes after the hydroacoustic search had expired and was on cooldown. He's clearly spotted and targeted although by what it's difficult to say. There seem to be six shots coming in at a time which could be one destroyer with a very fast rate of fire or for example the Seattle that's firing its forward and rear turret sequentially and oh shit! Okay that was a bit of a plot twist. The Chapayev and he is definitely inside the Chapayev's torpedo range. Luckily the Chapayev has potatoed his torpedo launch and he's only got one launcher on each side. Cranks switches to the armor piercing and disappointingly, those were nothing but overpenetrations. His second salvo, however... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not so much. Four citadels. 
Meanwhile, as anti-aircraft guns are working over that surviving squadron of enemy torpedo bombers who are going to die before they get to drop anything. And there was a Z-46 spotted there, which means he is entirely aware of the possibility that there may be torpedoes coming. And he now is actually getting some use out of his hydroacoustic surge consumable. So if he eats any of these torpedoes, it's going to be 100% his own fault. But he's not going to eat any of those torpedoes. Again, he might be wishing that he actually had the radar so he could locate and destroy that Z-46. But some of the shots that were coming in from the far side of the smokescreen in the island down there appear to have almost certainly been the enemy Seattle. Still alive, still kicking, and still being a pain in the arse. Tactically, the situation is not looking any better. There's still hundreds of points behind, the enemy still control two of the caps, and they're still ahead on kills. There's the enemy Seattle, John Wayne 380. Yeah, I suspect this game may be taking place on the North American server. What do you mean, he's John Wayne? Holy shit, what do they teach you kids in school these days? Go and look him up. He's an American legend. Right, anyway, back to the game. Hydro's still running, although it doesn't have long left. Then again, the Z-46 in common with other high-tier German destroyers, while the torpedoes don't do a massive amount of damage in comparison to other nations. There they are. They do have a very, very quick reload. Oh, that one looks like... No, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Actually, it's probably a good idea that he picked the hydroacoustic search rather than the radar, after all. Bearing in mind that the radar on the Salem, like the radar on the Atlanta, only has an 85 kilometer range. He may not have even been able to detect the Z-46 with radar in the first place. The hydroacoustic search, however, was definitely useful on this occasion. Oh, hang on, the team's actually ahead on kills. Okay, it's only one kill, but how the hell did that happen? Oh, be in my big mouth. <laughs> I just had to go and say it, didn't I? Second I open my mouth, Krax's team lose another two ships. God damn it. Well, anyway, Krauk's continuing to attempt to work his way around the flank, and there are all kinds of juicy targets over there, and the majority of these enemy ships, despite the fact that they've got a Salem in open water, appear to be mostly ignoring Krauk's. Now, you may think that they're just potatoing, but you have to take into account the broader picture. That Frederick the Great, for example, while it looks like he was completely ignoring a Salem on his flank, if you look to the north, there's a whole cluster of friendly ships, one of whom, a Hindenburg, was actually giving broadside to that Frederick the Great, and so was therefore a much more inviting target. So, while sometimes it may initially appear that the enemy team are acting like a bunch of potatoes, and the enemy midway has managed to sink the Iowa, so they're now down another ship, there's usually a method to their madness, which may not be immediately apparent unless you take a look at the broader picture. Now, Krauss is shaping up to be in a good position here on the flank and getting into a crossfire against those enemy ships. However, there's still the matter of the Seattle and the Z-46, and yep, there are his torpedoes, who were dug in around the side of that island, presumably, preparing to defend it against Krauss, and they know he's coming because he's spotted by aircraft. So rather than just sail around the corner straight into a second salvo of torpedoes from the Z-46, because that definitely wasn't all of the torpedoes that the Z-46 is capable of firing, he pops his hydro again to give him early warning, tucks in around the side of this island, and prepares initially, at least, to dispose of the enemy Frederick the Great. And he's got him, there's kill number three. With the hydro running, he's going to spot any torpedoes. There's the enemy Salem. So he definitely does not want to sail straight around the corner of this island because he's going to be given broadside not just to the Salem, but also the Seattle and the Z-46. Sprays the Z-46 with some AP because he was anticipating having to deal with the Seattle there, and since the AP is loaded anywhere, there's a couple of citadels for the Seattle's trouble. There are the Z-46's torpedoes, anti-aircraft guns working over, an incoming attack from the enemy carrier as well, switches to the high explosive, there's a dead Z-46, and the Four Goal Hall Award, which dates this battle immediately. This was obviously taking place during the period when the Alexander Ovechkin campaign was up. That just leaves the Seattle, who has managed to inflict some damage on him, but, well, he's not going to survive this. And there is the Kraken unleashed into the bargain. Enemy Salem around the corner. Appears to have had him spotted by radar all this time, but the Salem's radar has just expired, although he is still spotted by aircraft, but, well, 
This is a Des Moines class heavy cruiser. Okay, he's taken a lot of high explosive hits, which has probably stripped him of a lot of his anti aircraft firepower, but it's still a Des Moines class heavy cruiser. So those enemy fighters are probably not going to want to get any closer. In fact, the enemy carrier has in he has vectored them to intercept the torpedo bombers that are making an attack run on that Salem, who's going to be occupied with attempting to dodge the torpedo bombers and may, in fact, be giving broadside. Oh, baby. <laughs> Sadly, no citadels. Now, they're both firing armor piercing at each other. But, and there's one citadel at least, Krauss is angled against 203mm AP, which cannot overmatch his bows. And that Salem, yeah, not so much. So there's Krauss's sixth kill. And despite that, the enemy team is still 400 points ahead. But hey, at least now, even though they're behind on points, they're ahead on ships. They've got five against three. Surely this game is in the bag. Never underestimate the ability of your team to snatch defeat from the jewels of victory. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I mean, okay. Oh, and there's the high caliber award. And he's tanked over a million damage, by the way, in a cruiser. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's got another beautiful target to shoot at here. The Yamato over there, who absolutely can overmatch the Salem's armor and Citadel him from the front. Hell, the Yamato can overmatch everybody's armor and Citadel them from the front. Actually, Jingles, it can't Citadel the Grosser Kerfurst from the front. Well, technically it can, because yes, I, know, I am aware that the Grosser Kerfurst has strips of armor on its bows that are 50 millimeters thick. It can't be overmatched even by that thing's 18.1 inch guns. But it only has strips of armor that are 50 millimeters thick. It can technically be citadel by Yamato. Although, realistically, it's probably not going to happen. Anyway, the Yamato is dead. There are now only two enemy ships left, although they still have a commanding points lead. But in order to win on points, they're going to have to stay alive, and that means remaining undetected. And the midway over there has managed to fail at that. Although, you kind of have to take your hat off to the enemy Ognavoy, who is the only other surviving ship on the enemy team. He's only a tier 8 destroyer. And purely by virtue of having survived, beyond the first two minutes of the battle, he's already proved that he's better than 70% of the destroyer players in World of Warships. And he's managed to get himself two kills into the bargain. So he's probably... He's probably got a few choice words to say about his team in chat who have managed to throw a game despite having a lead like this. I think at this point it's only really that Ognavoy that stands a chance of being able to turn the tide of this battle. Although the odds are heavily stacked against him, the midway is surely doomed. The Ognavoy is getting a bit of a buff in the next patch, by the way, which has been delayed until the end of the month. Along with the Kiev and the Udaloy, they're all getting the addition of the Repair Party consumable. Uh, which I'm sure is going to come in very, very handy. Yeah, there's no way the Midway's going to survive. At this point, it's just a question of damage farming and seeing who's going to be the first to get the kill. And judging by the fact that it appears to be only Krauss who's shooting at the Midway, it's probably going to be him. Meanwhile, any chance that the Ognavoy was going to be able to turn this game around appears to have been scuppered by the fact that he has just been spotted by two full squadrons of torpedo bombers. <laughs> okay, he's managed to go undetected, but there, there he is again. They know where he is. And the friendly carrier. Well, he's managed to smoke up, although, well, it's an Ognavoy. They're very fast, so he's still having trouble slowing down. He has managed to go undetected again, but... With a reasonably good idea of where he is, there's a fairly good chance that the carrier should be able to land a successful cross drop on him. But the enemy team had built up such a massive points lead that they are still capable of winning this, because with less than a minute to go, they're up to nearly 950 points and they still have points coming in from one of the capture circles. Which is enough time for them to win on points. But Krauss has got that base covered because he's just slipped into the final capture circle. The enemy team now have to kill something in order to win. With their score arrested at 957 points, they're still 300 points ahead, and providing at least one of them stays alive until the end of the match, which is less than 30 seconds away, they're still going to win on points. So that midway, 
I mean, he's launching a strike, but he's trying to strike a Salem with this defensive fire-up. It's never going to happen. He has to get into cover behind that island and stop getting shot at. The Ognavoy, unfortunately, he's tried his best, but he's permanently spotted by aircraft. He's getting cross-dropped by torpedo bombers, and he's just been sunk by gunfire from the Zhao. And yet, even despite the fact that the Midway is heading out of cover rather than into it, he just had too much health for Krauss to finish off. And so that means that despite the fact that Krauss had scored 271,000 damage, tanked 1.3 million damage in a cruiser, and sunk six enemy ships, it still wasn't enough to carry his team. And that was, in fact, a defeat. And on that massive kick in the balls, that's it for today. <laughs> oh, man, it sucks to be you. <laughs> I've just unlocked this ship for myself, by the way. Um, I hope I never have a game like that. Anyway, Krauks, thank you for sending that replay in. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully, possibly even learned a thing or two from it. And as always, take care. And I'll catch you next time.